Hello students, I welcome you all to Arranger Academy. Today I am going to start with a new chapter of class 6 CBSC Science, the chapter 9, the living organisms and their surroundings. So students, during our vacation, we travel to different places. Some of them are cold, some very hot and dry, and some places are just so humid. And yet, all of them had so many organisms living, uh, which are of various kinds. We all must have found the different kinds of plants and animals in each of these regions that are so different from what we see in the other places. With this chapter, you will understand our surrounding and the different living organisms living in. So in this particular video, we will be looking into the NCRT questions and solutions. So let's proceed. So question one, what is a habitat? So habitat kya hai? Habitat ek natural living place hai jahan organism reside karte hai. So you, here you can see from the images there are so many different kinds of living organism each found living in such different drastic conditions. So these organisms hai, ye depend karte hai apne habitat pe for their different survival needs uh, jaysay for their food, water, shelter, air and even many other needs as well all right let's move to the next question now question two how are cactus adapted to survive in a desert so now this question is quite important so please pay your attention well so uh, here we have asked that uh, cactus plant jo hai, uh, that survives in desert so how is it adapted to live in such conditions so let's see that what are the conditions in desert so deserts have very hot and dry weather you know that deserts are certainly hot and dry as well water availability is low uh, now jo water is not easily available nahi hai in deserts now to survive in such drastic condition, the cactus is adapted to some special features. Now the uh, cactus plant hai, uh, to survive in such extreme conditions, it is adapted to some special features. Let's see them. Leaves are replaced by spines to reduce their surface area. Now the cactus plant mein leaves hai, they are now replaced by something called spines. Now these spines hai, wo kya karte hai? They reduces the surface area. Now how will that help? So by this the transpiration or the loss of water will also reduce. How? See obviously the transpiration hai, wo kya hai? It's a process by which a plant can uh, give off 90% of the water. So definitely if we reduce surface area kam karenge, so transpiration will also reduce drastically and at the end we will be saving up the water uh, or you can say that we can prevent the loss of water. The second is photosynthesis is carried out by the thick stem. Now since here leaves modified ho chuke hai into spines so uh, they cannot prominently depend on leaves for photosynthesis so the photosynthetic uh, activity hai, uh, now it will be carried out by the mainstream stem so here stem be modified hai, uh, like into thick stem now the thick stem hai, it will again helps to prevent the water loss the third feature here is that the plant is covered by a thick and waxy layer to retain water now the overall plant is covered up hai with a thick and waxy, co waxy coating uh, all around. So uh, by this they can again retain water, they can store water and can prevent their loss. Lastly, it has deep roots to absorb water. Now the cactus plant has since there is uh, not much availability of water, uh, water is not sufficiently available in deserts so th uh, their roots are also modified so that they can uh, go deep down and can absorb water from large depth all right so these are the different features with which the cactus has modified itself naturally uh, to survive in extreme uh, living conditions of desert
Let's move to the next question. Question 3. Fill in the blanks. So we are being provided with some statements that are given below. Each statement has a blank. So we have to statement ko carefully examine karna hai and have to try to fill each of them appropriately. So let's see the first statement. The presence of specific features which enables a plant or an animal to live in a particular habitat is called so uh, different plants and animals have they have been modified to some special or specific features uh, with the presence of which they can live in a particular habitat so this is called adaptation so the presence of such special feature is called adaptation the second statement is the habitats of the plants and animals that live on land are called what so the plants and animals that are land living so unke habitat ko hum kya kahenge? we call them as terrestrial habitats all right so uh, do you remember that the plants and animals that lives on land their uh, habitat is called the terrestrial habitat the third statement says the habitat of the plants and animals that live in water are called so the uh, water living plants and animals hai, unke habitat ko hum kya kahenge? we call them as aquatic habitats all right the next statement is soil water and air are the dash factors of a habitat so we know that just soil water or air hai, they are the non-living components of any given habitat so therefore they are referred to as abiotic factors so soil water and air are the abiotic factors of a habitat last changes in our surroundings that make us respond to them are called so jo hamare surroundings mein changes uh, suddenly occur hote hain so we respond to them instantly so this ability uh, to respond to such changes of our surrounding is called stimuli all right so we are done with fill in the blanks let's move to the next question so before discussing question 4 i would request all the students to please visit our website arrangeacademy.com Aapko wahan pe sare materials milenge for your exam. Also, you can download NCERT solutions for all the classes and for all the subjects. Coming back to question 4, which of the things in the following list are non-living? So, we have been provided with a list. It contains some living and non-living objects. So, we classify karna hai. And uh, let's see the list. We have plow, mushroom, sewing machine, radio, boat, water hyacinth and earthworm. Uh, let's understand them. So plow is a farming tool used for rotating or turning the soil before sowing the seed. Mushroom we know, sewing machine, a machine that is used to stitch cloth, radio, boat, water hyacinth. Water hyacinth is a free floating water plant. All right. Earthworm we know it's an insect. So let's see the answer now. Things that don't show life processes like healing, digestion, reproduction, etc. are called non-living things. So jo particular things uh, ye life processes exhibit nahi karte, such as healing, digestion and reproduction and many other. So we classify them as non-living things. So in the list given above, uh, plow, sewing machine, radio and boat are the four things that do not uh, have life and they are non-living things. Let's move to the next question. Question 5. Give an example of a non-living thing which shows any two characteristics. Two characteristics of living things. So, we have to example dena hai of a non-living thing, right? So, non-living thing uh, such that it can show at least two characteristics of living things. So, here you can analyze from the image itself that we are going to consider a robot. 
लिविंग थिंग्स शो मैनी कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स सच एज मूवमेंट रेस्पिरेशन थिंकिंग एक्सेट्रा यू नो जो लिविंग थिंग्स हैं वो uh, बहुत सारे कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स एग्जिबिट करते हैं सच एज दे कैन मूव दे कैन परफॉर्म रेस्पिरेशन दे कैन थिंक सो देर आर मैनी कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स दैट लिविंग थिंग्स कैन परफॉर्म a robot is an example of a non living thing which shows characteristics of a living thing so the robot hai it's a very great example uh, it shows a uh, lot many characteristics that were specifically meant to the humans earlier so two such characteristics we have listed here so a robot shows movement we know that robot can move whereas we know that movement is a characteristic property of living things so it can show movement and has the ability to solve problems so unlike other living beings it can show movement and also it has an ability to solve problems too so here the answer that we are considering is a robot you can have or you may have some other answers as well uh, you can cross check Let's see question six. Which of the following non-living things were once part of a living thing? So, we have a list provided here which contains non-living things. So, we have to tell us that uh, out of them, which one of uh, these uh, were once part of a living thing? So, in which of these non-living things are uh, living things are derived? Hai. So, here the list is butter, leather, soil, wool, electric bulb. cooking oil salt apple and rubber so let's see the answer we use animals and plants which are living to obtain many resources that are non living so hum animals and plants ko generally use karte hain to naturally derive many resources which finally becomes non living substances so the non living things that once were part of a living things are butter so we know that butter uh, is now obtained from milk and we further know that milk is obtained from animals such as cow buffalo goat so you can say that butter which is now a non living thing were once part of a living thing second is leather now leather is again a non living thing but since it has been obtained from the skin of animals it has once been a part of a living thing as well the third is wool now wool is obtained from the ship so again it fits our category the fourth is cooking oil so you must have heard of mustard seed oil right so mustard seed oil is obtained from mustard seeds which comes from the mustard plant and um, moreover all the oils are obtained uh, from the plants as well so you can say that cooking oil is also a non living thing which was once part of a living thing that are plants then apple you all had seen an apple tree so the apple that we eat comes from the living apple tree the last is rubber now rubber is obtained from the latex which comes from the tree so again you can say that all of this now satisfy our uh, category that non living things which were once part of a living thing now here you can say that the soil electric bulb and salt these three are the abiotic components so they had never been a part of a living thing so here we are done with this question let's move to the next ahead question 7 list the common characteristics of living things so hame living things ke kuch common characteristics ko observe uh, karke and list karna hai all right so let's look into this the common characteristics of a living thing are the first one that is movement so the movement is the ability to move from one place to another or using body parts for any purpose so movement uh, hame allow karta hai by which we can move from one location to other also hum apne different body parts ko bhi use kar sakte hain we can move them so this is a ability which is unique to living things only the second is respiration now respiration is very essential or is uh, quite essential for living being because it is due to this process that our body gets oxygen 
द थर्ड इज फूड इनटेक वी नो दैट हमें फूड रेगुलरली कंज्यूम करना है सो दैट हमें एनर्जी मिले फॉर परफॉर्मिंग डिफरेंट वर्क द फोर्थ इज एक्सक्रीशन now there are some harmful and useless products that are produced in our body after digestion so it is due to the excretion that we can get rid of those harmful and useless products from our body so again this is a very common and an important characteristic of a living thing the fifth is response to stimuli we know that our body can easily respond to the changes in the surrounding the sixth is reproduction we humans and all the living things can multiply so again this is an unique property that is acquired by the living being finally the growth we know that uh, living beings can grow uh, unlike the non living things so these are some common characteristics uh, that you should remember now let's move to the next question so question 8 explain why speed is important for survival in the grasslands for animals that live there so we know that speed is again an important uh, feature that living being have but why is it so important for the animals living in the grassland why and how it helps in the survival of such animals there's an hint as well that there are few trees or places for animals to hide in grassland habitats so basically jo grasslands hota hai they are large field which is covered only with the grasses there are very few trees there so uh, you can easily understand that wahan pe jo animals hai they have very few places to hide so you can now understand that why speed is important now also let's see what's we have in the answer so survival in grassland highly demands on an animal speed so grasslands mein uh, animals ke survival ke liye speed becomes a very important property now in a habitat one organism serves as the food for another organism we know that ek habitat mein ek organism uh, different organism pe ya ek second organism pe depend karta hai uh, for getting its food now predators often search for easy prey now those animals that are in search of other smaller animals uh, they try to find easy prey now in this case when there are only few spots to hide the speed of the prey to outrun the predator becomes important for its survival so now in the case where we are in grasslands so there are very few spots to hide so yahan par ye jo speed hai it becomes a very important property because uh, with speed the prey can uh, run out or can outrun the predator and can serve and can save their life and therefore it is, it becomes very important uh, property for their survival so therefore you can understand that why speed is so important for the survival uh, in the grasslands for animals that live there thank you students for being with us throughout this video You can subscribe to Arrange Academy on YouTube for more such videos. आप हमारे साइट को विजिट कर सकते हैं अरेंजे अकेडमी डॉट कॉम फॉर मोर सच डिटेल्स ऑल्सो आप वहाँ से एन सी आर टी सोल्यूशन डाउनलोड कर सकते हैं फॉर ऑल योर क्लासेस एंड फॉर ऑल द सब्जेक्ट सो दैट यू कैन एस योर एग्जाम्स कीप लर्निंग कीप ग्रोइंग थैंक यू